Welcome to Learn Data with Mark. In this video, we're going to learn about Streamlit metrics. Now you might be asking yourself, what are Streamlit metrics? And so they're effectively those headline numbers that you see on dashboards, you know, the really cool looking ones. We get the big number and sometimes you get a comparison to an equivalent number from another period in time. And so we're going to see if we can create something similar to that. And we're going to start with a Streamlit app that I have already. Um, so this is using the Apache Pinot baseball quick start and we've got the number of home runs, stolen bases and strikeouts. Now I am not an expert in baseball but I understand the first two things are good and the third thing not so good. Uh, but what we're going to do is let's have a look at VS Code um, so we can see what uh, what the, the code looks like so far. And so you can see we've got a query going against Pino, we get the results into a data frame, and then we're just putting the resulting data frame on the screen. But what we want to do is let's add some metrics. And so we're going to call st.metric. Uh, so we can call that, let's start with the home runs. And we need to pass in a label, which is just going to be a string, like for example, saying home runs. And then we need to pass in a value, which is going to be that num numeric value from the data frame. Uh, and once we've done that, let's do the same for the stolen bases and then the same for the strikeouts as well. Once we've done that, we can go back to our UI and have a look at what we've done. Uh, and so you can see we've got each, on each row, we've got one of the metrics. So they're kind of going like the first one is home runs and we've got stolen bases and then we've got strikeouts. But it'd be quite cool if they were on the same row. And so the way that we can do that, if we come back to Visual Studio Code, is we can use st.columns to get a number of columns that are going to go on the same row. And so in this case, we want to do three. So let's uh, create, let's call st.columns. We'll get three um, columns and we'll call them col1, col2, col3. And then all we need to do is we need to just go and put with col1, with col2, and with col3 around our code. And now we can go back to the UI and you can see now all of them are in a row. So, so far, so good. Uh, we don't really need that data frame anymore, right? We can get rid of that. So let's delete that. And now what will be cool is if we can do the comparison. So we're going to just compare it to the previous year. So let's copy our um, query that we had that got those got those values for the first year. And we'll run, we'll copy it down and we'll just change the year. So we'll do starting year minus one. And let's now add the delta. So delta is like the, the difference. Uh, and so we're going to take the value from the first data frame, so i.e. the starting year, and then we're going to subtract the second value, i.e. the value from the second year, the previous year. And the only thing we need to keep in mind is that when we're doing strikeouts, because strikeouts is a bad thing, we can pass in delta color inverse. And so that means if it goes down, it's good, and up, it's bad. And if we come back to our UI again, we can see that we've got each of our metrics along with the delta. So that's working pretty well. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the year configurable. So let's go back to VS Code and we'll copy our last query. What we're going to do instead is write a query that just gets the years from this table uh, in chronological order, starting with the most recent years. And once we've got those, we can put them into an ST select box, which will give us a nice drop down where we can select the year that we want. And if we come back to the UI again, we can now see we've got a nice drop down of the years and we can kind of change which metrics are being shown by selecting different years as so we can try out a few of them there. Uh, and so that's the end of this video in which we've learned how to use metrics in Streamlit. And if you found this video useful, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel so that you'll learn when there's some new videos. And if you have ideas for new things that I should cover, please let me know in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.